We're going to listen to Prosser discuss the Southwest Corridor Project. And as anybody who's been following along with this stuff knows, Prosser was the city manager of Tigard, another career technocrat. Um, him and both Warner uh, were both career technocrats. I believe Prosser has... Uh, I think it was a $6,000 a month pension, and uh, Warner has a $10,000 a month pension. All taxpayer-funded pensions, um, nice big fat ones. Uh, Prosser and Warner actually exemplify everything that's wrong with a TriMet board, as far as I'm concerned, because these are two people that have no business being on the board because they represent people that never use transit. But once again, they are the ones that are connected to the power players and that's why they're on the board. Um, so, so let's listen to Prosser. Prosser seems a likable enough guy, but we knew when he came on the board he was staunchly pro-rail, and nobody can get on that board that's not pro-rail. It's a, a pro-rail governor, pro-rail board, a pro-rail administration, and let's listen to him talk. I'll cut in when necessary. Yeah, uh, you know, I know the board and, and staff are fully aware that I used to be the city manager in, in Tigard and I was the city manager there when you know I think Tigard was really the one that um, moved this project onto the, the regional consciousness um, so it's I know that it's very important to, to Tigard. Obviously when he says Tigard push these things forward he means the Tigard, the bureaucrats. Obviously the people in Tigard probably had very little knowledge of this, uh, never thought about it until the last election. So when he when he's using the word tigered, he's talking about the tigered technocrats. You know, one of the things about this project that, again, speaking from my tigered background, um, that we were really excited about is it's, we're approaching the development of this study and this um, project in differently than we have in the past. You know, in the past, we looked at the, the transit needs and, uh, and kind of figured out where the line would go and then figured out where the stations would go. This project, there is a much, much stronger emphasis on looking at the ex uh, expected and desired land uses. And Did you just hear what he said? He has just stated, and all, a lot of us, more advanced people uh, that understand what's happening here know this already, but he said it for the record. He said that the light rail line, all of this expansion that's been going on with TriMet, this expansion that has hijacked the transit system is for property development purposes. He just pointed it out. He just, he just said it right there, that in the past we would worry about transit uses, but now it's all about land. And this is the hijacking of TriMet that we've been talking about for years here. This is what's happened to the TriMet Transit District has turned from a TriMet Transit Agency into a property development agency, and it's and it's serious. Um, and he just says it right there for everybody to hear that transit is no longer the priority. We we know that those of us that watch this material. You can go to any board meeting and they'll never talk about transit. Occasionally they'll put in a speaker about something, but it's always about the capital projects and the land use. That's it. And and this is this is the bottom line for all of us TriMet critics is how the hijacking of TriMet occurred when Fred Hansen appeared and decided we were going to change uh, the transit agency into a property development agency. And, and it's a serious it's a serious fiduciary um, screw up as far as a lot of us are concerned that this was allowed to happen and is continuing to be allowed to happen. You know, how do you make places and the stations, um, the stops are, are kind of more focused on how can we support those local aspirations and then how do you connect them with rail or BRT. So I'm really excited about this and I'm, I'm really anxious to see what the outcome is. Um, I do have, you know, one question which, you know, obviously there was a, a, a ballot measure in Tigard um, this spring. Um, that purported to, uh, uh, well, it changed the, the, the city charger, charter in Tigard um, in, in relation to these projects. 
how has that impacted um, the conduct of this study? And you know, how are, how are, is you know, it's more of a tigered question. How how are they responding, and, and how is all this going to be coordinated with that new requirement? So I'm not an attorney. Obviously, a very relevant question. Let's hear how the TriMet uh, official responds to that. Um, but what I've seen from our uh, colleagues at Tigard is they have continued to participate in the process. I think their election was about, at some point, come back to us if you're going to move forward for a vote. I think that's correct. I think that's exactly what the vote, the last vote said. If you're going to build anything before you build it, we want to say in it. So this is really about studying. It's not about building. It's not about choosing what you're going to do. But I expect that at some point in the future there will be a vote, both probably, maybe regionally, but certainly in Tigard and potentially in Tualatin as we move forward. But our colleagues from, the, from Mayor Cook um, down through staff have been very participatory in making us aware of their issues, concerns, and aspirations as we move forward. I haven't seen a significant change in their um, participation in the project. Um, driver Ellen Fox, uh, Crash 3517, runs an online blog slandering myself and uh, pretty much everyone on this website. Did she get me? Just saying. No. Aww. Just saying.